So as I'm learning more about MLflow, I've got another iteration on this project. The idea is I'm a data scientist, I'm building models. I wanna be able to share those models with my team. Let's run experiments, see which models are best. And MLflow largely solves this problem. So like kind of case in point, I just ran this experiment. I have a hyperparameter here. This is something that I control as the, as the user. I change this. It's a lever I can pull on to make my model better or worse. And I can see that in this experiment with an alpha value of 0.1, I had a root mean squared error of 0.7 roughly. When I upped it to 0.9, I'm at 0.83. Super simplistic, but we're gonna call this one better. So great, so we have the experiment tracker MLflow, it's showing us this, but now I wanna, I wanna check this code into source control so that other people can use it. And when I do so, I don't want them to just trust me that I ran the project locally and I'm not breaking anything. I'd like to verify that when I check all of this code in, we can, we can reproduce this entire project, we can build everything, and nothing will break. And that's where GitHub Actions or, or other CICD tools will come in. So let's step through this example. So I'm gonna jump over to VS Code and I've got my project. I just ran this pro I ran this successfully. And now to, to run this in GitHub Actions, I'm just gonna update a YAML file. This is my GitHub Action file that's gonna tell GitHub Actions what to do. And one thing that's that I really like about this is you can specify environment variables. So the way I've built out this project, you know, when I originally started, sorry to jump around, when I originally started, I had kind of hard coded in the hyperparameters, like I said, a default, but then asked the user to provide them when they run the code. And I'm getting to a slightly better modular design where I'm saying something like, hey, we're, we're just gonna source environment variables. I'll put them in a configuration file. So you can go in and change a config file as an end user. You don't have to edit code to just run a different experiment. You shouldn't have to touch the code. Just touch this one, basically this one text file. Um, and now with, with our GitHub action, I can pass in those same environment variables directly into the environment that GitHub is gonna spin up to run our code, to test to make sure everything builds and works. And I just need to make this one little edit. So now um, what I will go ahead and do, let's just run git status and see where we're at. I'm gonna add these to, and then commit them. So we'll say something like updated hyperparam. And it, this is ugly, I know, but it's just conceptually. And what we're gonna do now, so I'm gonna push this and the branch I'm on, I think is called GRC. Actually, I should check. What is my branch? Uh, let's, so we're gonna push to GRC new experiment. And when we do this now, we'll go back over to our GitHub repo and we're gonna be prompted, hey, you've got this compare and let's create a pull request. And when we do this, I'm, I'll, this is me creating the pull request. Somebody else in theory would come in and say, okay, great, I wanna review this, see if it makes sense. So we'd like two things to happen. One is I'd like to this person to be able to review the code and see, here's what Gus changed. Does this make sense or not? Do I, under do I understand what he, what he did? And then second is to have something that actually runs the code independent of me promising you pinky swear that I ran it on my machine and it works and it will probably work on your machine. Let's just run it on a third party machine and see what happens. And that's happening right now, as you can see with this CI process. So we'll jump in and just take a look at the process, what's going on. GitHub Actions is reading from our workflow file. It's got our updated hyperparameter values and it's going to install of our dependencies and run our project. But meanwhile, we can actually look, when we go back to this pull request, at exactly what has changed. So let's look at the code itself. And we can do that. Uh, blah, 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 we can do that here. Uh, let's take a look. And so when I look at this code change now, again, I'm saying code change, but we just changed a configuration file. I can see we went from an alpha value of 0 0.1 to 0 0.9. Again, I'm not saying this is the most aesthetically pleasing thing in the world, but this is a lot easier than having to jump into code to look at stuff because I'm just, this one field is, get, is what's getting updated for an experiment. Again, overly simplistic, but I make this one edit, I can now run again. And even better, like it's automatically happening with our GitHub action or with whatever our CICD process is, Jenkins, other tools, there's lots of great ones. Uh, but conceptually, this is different than like, I ran this, I'm telling you it's better, here's my Slack message or email, use this value, I check the code and I promise it'll work. It's like, oh, as we combine tools like our experiment tracker and our and the way we build our, build our projects, MLflow, with a CICD tool, we can start to automate out, we can start to find some of the problems that would pop up and, and smooth them out. Of course, we're not eliminating everything, but we're at least eliminating the, hey, what changed? Thank you, version control system. I can see exactly what this is. And with a better project design, you know, configuration files versus code, I can see it's a little bit clearer, it's easier to do that. And then in terms of, hey, did, when you change something, did it break? 
we have this automated workflow in our GitHub action or in our CACD process check. Okay, uh, you know, I could at least say, say that when I ran this entire thing, nothing broke. Uh, hardly perfect, but a big step forward. Hope you found this interesting. You know, more to come from me as always.